Hello and a warm welcome to another edition of To The Point. 2014 elections has not only been about an astounding mandate given to the Narendra Modi-led government, but also about the emergence of the regional forces, especially in states like Tamil Nadu, Orissa and West Bengal. But how are these opposition blocs shaping themselves in terms of their relations with the centre and the state and also the issues they will raise and they are raising in the House? Joining me now is the Chief Whip of Trinamool Congress in Rajya Sabha and also the spokesperson for the party. I welcome Derek O'Brien to the point. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, Derek, let me begin with a very direct question with you. Is Trinamool really finding it hard to define its relationship with the centre at the moment? Because I very well remember post-2002 Godra riots, Mamta Banerjee was one of the very few leaders who actually called up Narendra Modi and congratulated him. But why is this distance uh, getting so stretched out and she's been, not been able to build bridges with him? I think, uh, firstly, you mentioned a lot, the two parts to your question. Let me answer the first one. We won a big victory in Bengal. I think just as the BJP won a big victory nationally, I think people have forgotten the numbers. So let me re reaffirm those numbers. The left in Bengal were down to two seats out of 42. We got 34 seats. Yeah. Now that's a large number of seats. In running a government, there's a political side to it, politics, and there's a government side to it. This is not about crossing a bridge. We are running a government in Bengal. So Mamta Banerjee needs no lessons. Mamta Banerjee has one lesson. The lesson she learns is that she's been given a mandate by the people. In the assembly, we have a huge majority on our own without anyone. And in, in parliament, we have 46 so, members. Certainly, those numbers are not a secret. Even people who are watching the show know the kind of mandate which Mamta Banerjee and Modi, both of them have got. But my question to you was, how, how the distance is going to be... I think bridged? this is not about personal A talking to B or B talking to C. This is about a government in West Bengal on one end. It's a government of West Bengal. No, but isn't it's it a, a norm that government. when a new government gets elected, people from the state do call up and try and build bridges. But that's, that is not happening in the case of Mamta Banerjee. See, tele uh, bridges are not built with telephone calls. Bridges are built with uh, brick and mortar. Okay, so let me put it the other way now. I'm not going to talk about the brick and mortar. But is it about the new real reality which has dawned on Srinamool that of course you cannot uh, annoy your 25% Muslim population and which is why Mamta Didi had, main, had been maintaining that anti-Modi position which we saw throughout Lok Sabha elections and that stance is still maintained. I don't want to be rude but I have to use a two-word term to dismiss your, I can't even call it a question no, no, but your ahead, observation. Absolute trash. It's to, if you look at the electorate of Bengal, it is not about Hindu, Muslim, Christian. Across Bengal, people voted for Trinamool Congress. 40% of the Bengal electorate voted for the Trinamool Congress. 17% for the BJP, 20 fraction percent for the CPM. So please don't come to this conclusion. And Bengal is different. People live there in communal harmony. The message for Bengal is three priorities of the Mamta Banerjee government. Development, development and development. No, but... but isn't it not a reality which Mamta Banerjee is not shying away from? And that is that if she takes a pro-Modi stance, the political perception which we are talking about, that goes on the wrong side. Where is pro-Modi, anti-Modi coming to this? This is pro-development or anti-development? You want to bring your uh, FDI in uh, insurance, we will oppose it. You want, to bring, you want to bring FDI in rail, we will oppose it. You want to make a bullet train for 60,000 crores of rupees, we'd rather tell you use the 60,000 crores of rupees better. There is a difference between governance and there's a difference between politics. Let me give you an example. An example, if a minister, not one, three or four ministers from the central government, union ministers, have come to Bengal. Right. Guess what happened? When they wanted an interview with Mamta Di, did she grant them an, uh, uh, an audience? Of course she did. She's met five ministers. Okay. Doesn't matter on the ground in Bengal, we can oppose BJP politically. Right. That's another story. Right. But there has to be... A lot of coordination and for a, a so party admit, like us... you admit to that kind of... Why is that admit? Do you admit to that kind Are of... Baba, what is that admit? Trinamool Congress is one of the first parties who discussed a concept called operative federalism. Okay. Please understand. The concept of operative federalism, parties talk about cooperative federalism. We say, no, it has to be operative federalism. Okay. And the BJP 
the NDA in many ways has shown that they are open to some operative, cooperative federalism and in many ways they haven't shown it's too early now. We have been demanding, example, Finance Commission has recommended there are three debt stress states. The West Bengal's financial condition is in shambles and it's not a secret. You have a loan which is about 2 lakh crores but there is a kind of an unwritten relationship, an unwritten code which exists between the centre and the state and with the kind of debt you have on your state's head, do you think that Mamta Banerjee will not be forced to face a situation where she will have to sit at the negotiating table with Narendra Modi and uh, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley? See, I don't because know. So far, we have. I don't know what unwritten, which unwritten code you're talking about. Let me give you some more examples. I think the best example is now you mentioned the two lakh crore debt. Right. Now we could be sitting around for the next five years and saying, "Oh my gosh, you know, we have a two lakh crore debt." So at one level, let me explain this point to you. At one level, we are working with the union government. For the last five years, UPA didn't give us any money. We are working. At the second level, rather than just sit with a thumb in a mouth and crib, what are we doing? West Bengal from 2011 to 2014, guess what? The revenue collection has increased by 87%. Okay. From 22,000 crores in 2011 to 40,000 crores in 2014. So this is not... Either or. What my point is that uh, the, the 14th Finance Co Commission was supposed to disburse you an amount of some 2,54,000 crores. So there are political hurdles always, you know, that we've seen in the past uh, the, the states making a hue and cry that they are not getting funds from the centre. So if you keep raising issues and maybe you don't have a very cordial relationship with the centre. There is no money to disperse. We are not asking, we are not begging for money. Huh? We haven't gone there saying, Hamko paisa do, please, we are, no. No, no, want, that's, that's no, no, let state. me clarify. No, 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 let that's me clarify the position. That's the right of the state. That's that is right not, of the state. Let me clarify the position of the state government. Nilo, the position of the state government is we're asking for a debt moratorium. We are not asking for arms. Okay. We are asking for a debt moratorium where for three years, I want to get a little technical, for three years there will be no interest payment. We will only pay back the capital of that. Yeah. So please don't get it wrong that West Bengal doesn't need to beg, will not beg. West Bengal, in all humility, will be given what is due to it. Let me come to the 9th June meeting, which Mamta Banerjee had with the left leaders. It was supposed to be a meeting which, which really created a kind of a political hailstorm because she talked about the communal angle of BJP, secularism in West Bengal. So are we see a she situation... Also, no, are we going to see a situation where we'll see a Nitish Lalu act in West Bengal where you're ready to have maybe an alliance with, with the left? I'll answer the question straight, but before that, let me give you a little lighter. They had a meeting. She also gave them some very good coffee and some good fish fry. Okay. okay but on a more serious note, you mentioned two names. Right. Nitish Lalu and Nitish Lalu, you said. Yeah. Now listen, when do people get together? Losers get together. One loser, I'm not getting into names because this is not A loser, B loser, C loser. They will get together to take on a winner. In West Bengal, where is the picture? But I'm in all humil Listen, to, I'm answering your question directly. Will we go with the left? Of course not. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a, it's not. It's not only a crazy question. It's, it's a, you know, uh, the chances. No, the chances of that happening. Derek, it's not a crazy question. I'll give you a reason that, for that. I'll give you a reason. Let me finish for that. my answer. Okay. Let me finish my answer. In West Bengal, where in three years, most of the media, especially in the last two years, if you saw the opinion polls and this Delhi Lutians Delhi uh, media. Everyone thought Trinamool was 18 to 22 seats. Only Trinamool and the people of Bengal knew and they judged us and they said, no, you've done good work, take 34 seats. So why should we want to go with anybody? Congress, CPM, BJP. No. Okay. You have said that you're not going to enter into any... But don't you think, I mean, all the strategists, all the analysts at that point of time, post that meeting, were talking about the fact that Trinamool Congress, somewhere down the line, is scared of the rise of BJP in Bengal. You would not deny the fact that BJP has got a vote share of 16.8%. Does, does that not worry Trinamool Congress as a party? Now, you, you, tell not me, you tell me if you're in your position. Okay. One child in an exam got 40 out of 100. The next child got 17 out of 100. Now you're telling the child who got 40, careful, somebody on your back. No. So you're not I worried at all. One minute. Yes, a party which got 7% went to 17%, but the party, I'm not getting into that. Please wait 
I'll tell you one other very important statistic. Again, it's going back to the parliament. If you take those 34 seats we won, eight were won by others. If you extrapolate those 34 seats on assembly, guess the number. Those are thus seat. The kind of uh, spate and the clashes we saw between the BJP cadres and the Trinamool Congress, how does one read that? I don't think you saw it. You read about it. Of course, even if I have read it, so what, you read about it. what is the message So my says? message here is very clear. Be believe half of what you see. Mm -hmm. Believe half of what you see and nothing of what you hear. I want to make this charge here on your program. Believe half of what you see and nothing of what you hear. It's a serious issue. We are bringing it up in Parliament next week. The media, sections of the media have been extremely unfair to what is going on One in Bengal. One quick question before I go on to the break. Amit Shah is at the helm of affairs on BJP now. And you saw the kind of performance he gave in a state ele in an election like in a state like UP. Now, does that not worry you if a man like Amit Shah enters the West Bengal turf and he tries and decimates Srinamool or he will try to do it? That is what they are claiming. You know, you, can... doesn't that worry you as a party? Listen, You're saying that listen, no, no, no. I'll tell you what worries us as a party. What is the focus of this party? Right. We're looking for better ways to develop infrastructure in Bengal. Okay. We're looking for better ways to improve the lot of the agricultural laborer in Bengal. Yeah. We're looking for better ways to improve urban and suburban areas of Bengal. Right. We are looking for these better ways. Who has come to which party? This is every, I would not want to comment on any other party. But for all this, Derek, for all this, you need a cordial relationship with the center. But I'll have to take a See, quick break here. I'll have to take a quick okay, break here. Care. When we come back, we talk about the factors which are ailing the West Bengal government and also how these opposition blocks like BJD, AIDMK and Srinamool are going to function in the years to come. Back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching To The Point with Trinamool Congress leader Derek O'Brien. Derek, my question to you is that post-government uh, formation, there was a talk that uh, BJD, AIDMK and Trinamool Congress will come together, they'll coalesce together to form a numerically respectable opposition. Do you really see that functioning? I think the first focus is Trinamool functions very much. 34 MPs in uh, Lok Sabha, 12 in Rajya Sabha. We look at it. Uh, point by point, you've mentioned the three parties. There are other parties also. There is the JDU. And I don't think uh, everything should be in the speculative space because the reality is someone has got 34 seats, someone has got 37 seats, someone has got 20 seats. So this is the way it goes. So this is the way the cards are being dealt. Each party... So if it comes to your relationship with the Congress, you would not hesitate in stitching an alliance to form a, some kind of an opposition block with Congress? Let me categorically state on your program... A party which has won 34 seats on its own mm -hmm. in Parliament for Lok Sabha when BJP were doing so well across but not in Bengal, 34 seats extrapolated onto 210 uh, MLA seats. We're not wanting to be Santa Claus in the month of August mm -hmm. because we know we are fine on our own. So why should we stitch together alliance? We are no. fighting on our own. We've no, got 34 no. seats. I'm talking about an opposition block and when I say that, there were also reports. Good question. No, Good. I'll tell you. I'll tell no, you. No, no. We are not. We are a political party. We are not an NGO. So we're going to talk to all political parties on FDI. You have the numbers. I'm not denying that. No, no, no. One minute. On FDI and insurance, when BJP tried to bring in this bill last week, and then two days Monday, what happened to the numbers? Could BJP bring this bill, or they had to send it to a select committee? They didn't See, have the numbers. What, what I'm so there's to... a two different... Let me explain to you, Niru. There are two different matches being played. One is Lok Sabha. No doubt about it. The NDA have the numbers. In Rajya Sabha, they do not have the numbers. And no, in a parliamentary democracy, no, no, for all the chat we do, am, it's about numbers. I am not denying that. What I'm saying is that there were reports initially. You have to function as a block. Now, there were reports uh, in the past few days that probably you were uh, trying to... Uh, speak to the AIDMK and you know All trying nonsense. to raise no no listen to me nonsense. you were trying to raise a pitch for the post of a deputy All speaker nonsense. in the house nonsense L listen I cannot react to what reports you read in your daily newspapers we have not been talking on this issue Trinamool has listen, let me make it very clear have, has not asked for any anything like that nor do we ask for bungalows in Delhi nor do we ask for houses in Delhi nor do we ask for special standing committees aap dijiye hum log le lega now, coming to West Bengal, uh, 
Now, the green shoots have really begun uh, to be seen in West Bengal as far as your infrastructure development is concerned, development of educational institutions is concerned. But what about the investment climate? Because again, I'll come back to the reports which are coming from West Bengal, not from the Delhi newspapers, saying that the investment climate is not very conducive. You have MOUs being signed, but the investors are not coming in. When you're talking about investment, one of the big investment areas you will agree as a journalist is MSMEs. Okay. Now, how do you judge whether the MSME sector is buoyant or not buoyant is banks how they want to expose their expose themselves to msmes right so the bank exposure more the bank exposure the better msme are doing karnatak had a bank exposure increase bank loans means more banks giving loans to msmes was 48 percent increase gujarat not bad they had 28 percent bengal had a hundred and four percent Okay. QED? What does this mean? Number one. Number one. Number two. This spurious uh, uh, word being spread in the media is there's no land in Bengal. Mm -hmm. Bengal has now a land bank, lots of thousands of acres of land. I can tell you my colleague, Dr. Amit Mitra, Finance Minister, come Industry Minister. So, Derek, tell he me, is one of the most qualified people. Last year, your own government... As I told you about tax, 22,000 no, no. crores to 40,000 crores. Your own Industry Minister, Partha Chatterjee, was stripped of his industry portfolio just because he was not performing. By the way, my colleague Partha Chatterjee happens to be the Secretary General of my party. Okay. Very senior post in the party. Number two, he is a... Four, he holds four portfolios in Bengal, let me tell you. So since he's running these three, education plus parliamentary affairs, for better coordination between finance and industry, those two were clubbed together, so there could be one captain, so the engine would move faster. Okay. What is wrong in that? Now you're using the word stripped, where the man is running four ministries. Why don't you ask this question? Why is Mr. Arun Jetri the defense minister and the, uh, and the finance no, minister? Those questions have been raised. Coordination can be the reason. I'm not, I'm not questioning it. What has happened in the last one year, you please understand we've been in government for three years. In the first one year, we were playing blind man's buff. Why? Files were missing, the whole work culture of Bengal. Fair enough. Now I'll come to another point. Sushma Swaraj recently went to Bangladesh. She raised issues of the Tista water uh, sharing issue and also about the land boundary agreement. Both were sticky issues as far as Srinamool Congress was concerned. I, all I want to know from you is that is Srinamool going to change its stand as far as the Tista water issue is concerned? Because when this issue came up, Mamta Banerjee stalled. Now you, you don't go back and say the why she stalled the issue because we all know that. What I want to know from you is, she said that when Lok Sabha elections are going to get over, we'll talk about it. Now once Lok Sabha elections are done, is Srinamool Congress going to change its stance as far as the quantum of water release is, going to, is concerned? Firstly, you call it a sticky issue. It's not a sticky issue. Okay. It's a very serious issue between... No, it's a sticky issue when it comes to bilateral relationship between two countries. Bilateral relations, you understand. What is the big Trinamool macro view on bilateral relations? Our belief is that Bengal, firstly, is a state, like very few other states, which shares its borders with three other states. Right? Our view on foreign policy, we have two views on foreign policy. Our first view is that the country, when it comes to the broad macro issues, must speak in one voice. Right. You know? That's a part of your manifesto also. Yes, you must, spoken yes. About I'm how glad you read the manifesto, but people don't read manifestos, but I'm glad you as a journalist did, and I'm not being condescending. So one is one voice. If it's Palestine, one voice. So we rarely you will find a note of discord from Trinamul, never ever. <laughs> However, when it comes to the relationship with neighboring countries, just as the central, and I think the, the NDA government is more tuned into this right. than their, their predecessors. So our view is that when it comes to these neighbor, neighboring uh, countries, the states, because there are districts in North Bengal, which are affected with all this. So a solution has to be found, but there are people who are living there, Bangladesh's point of view, our point of view. Now, these decisions are arrived at a macro level. State government, chief minister NDA, is taken into conference. NDA government is saying that they will talk to all the stakeholders, which talk. includes stake, one of the stakeholders, so of course, talk. is Bengal. We are Bengal. reasonable people. Yeah. So, see, we are very so reasonable is, people. So do we see a possibility of Trinamool changing its stand? Why should Trinamool change its stand? See, I'll tell you a good thing about Trinamool. When Trinamool comes up with a policy, we are not flip-flop. 
we are always willing to talk. Okay. Please understand. You're willing to talk. Okay. One, understand. One sec. One right. sec. One sec. Solutions have to be found. Right. Solutions have to be always found through dialogue. And this open mind continues when it comes to the land boundary agreement also. Land boundary agreement, we have a policy. We believe we have a policy. See, I think the issue is, you know, Trinamool Congress does not believe in opposing for the sake of opposing. Okay. Even rail budget. Why we oppose the bullet train? Why we oppose this? We, are we, we even told the rail minister how you can increase your freight. Uh, I'll come on to another issue, and that is uh, the issue of Krishnanagar MP Tapashpal. I'm not going to, do, to get into the legalities because I know the case is sub -juris. The matter is still in the court. But what I want to ask you is that if a Trinamool MP talks in such a brazen manner, as what the video has revealed, is it not embarrassing for a party like Trinamool, which has worked so hard, and just in a dash of a second, an MP talks like that and a video gets released? And So what do you want me to say? That we are celebrating that he said that. Of no. course, he should never have said what he said. Right. You know, we don't have a party to celebrate what he said. There are people who have given their views. No, but when he talks... What is, the, what is the line? I'll tell you something. Someone has made a blunder. Right. Okay. Big blunder. Mm -hmm. What does the man do? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Unconditional the man, the man he apologizes. Offers. The man apologizes to his wife, to his family, to the people there. And Trinamool you know, pardons him. No, that is the Trinamool's internal matter. Forget about Trinamool for a moment. Right. Trinamool as a party can... Uh, you've used the word pardon. Fine. We, I won't quibble with the word. Mm -hmm. After that, somebody decides to take it to the court. After that, we have to leave it to the courts. Whatever the courts will decide, we will say, yeah, this is fine. Trinamool has always had to struggle. You know? We struggle in the sense we fought the CPM for 34 years. Right. Mamta Banerjee has been bashed on the head, bones have been broken. So these little media skirmishes. It doesn't and affect media, you much. No, at, it used to. I'll be very frank with you. I'm also in the, I've been in the, in the media on television. I've been now with the party for 11 years. For the first seven, eight years, you know, I, even after these election results coming, when they say 18 seats you'll get, you get 34. I went on one channel, they say you get 20 seats. So you do good work. You do good work. And you don't, I think the there's a better judge than the media. I have all respect for the media. The better judge for the media... You mean to say that it doesn't affect the party? I want to make party. two points. It doesn't affect the image of a party if an MP is talking about um, uh, CPIM women? Of course women. it does. Yeah. Of course it does. I'll take it beyond. Why only image of a party? It may also reflect the image of a state. But I want to make two points here on the media. Right. There's a bigger judge than the media, with all respect to the media. Yeah. And the bigger judge to the media are the people. Because they are watching everything and then they finally, what are they doing? They're going out and voting. Number two which is a matter of major concern for us. And I want to bring this up in the Rajya Sabha, and I'm sure we're going to get support from other parties. We seriously want to take a look at retaining the independence of the media. The corporatization of the media can be dangerous. We have a very open mind on this. Okay. Two points. One is the media reform, if needed. We need to talk, debate. We need to start debating it. And in Rajya Sabha, first. And the second is electoral reform. Uh, my question, last question to you is that Mamta Banerjee, throughout elections, yeah. She never gave interviews, even I asked for it. She never spoke to the media. Has she gone in a shell where she doesn't like to speak to the media, where she doesn't like to give interviews? Okay. Mamta Banerjee going in a shell. Or is shell. it only Derek O'Brien who's doing this talking? No. On behalf of the party? No. Mamta the has had a new focus in the last three years. Let me give you two little points to end. Normally, Calcutta was run through writer's building. No, no one no. You know, everything was centralized. She has had 57 district meetings where she's taken the seat of government to the districts. Mm. You know, she's made three dozen visits to North Bengal. Okay, I think Mamta Banerjee wants to be judged by her actions, mm -hmm. more by her actions. Sometimes you don't need words. No, Actions why? speak louder than words. No, if she has to attend 54 meetings, like what 58. you're saying, 58 meetings, Districts. then why don't you develop a second round of leadership? Why only Mamta Banerjee? Of oh. course, she's a party supremo. Oh but my gosh. Why is the second oh round of leadership not oh being developed? Oh my gosh. Of course, you're talking about the second round. We finished talking about the second round. Now we are going to the third round to the boys and girls who are in their 20s. Uh -huh. You know something? If you please go, don't interview the Derek O'Briens of the world because we are national spokespersons. Mm -hmm. Go and interview one of our members of parliament. Who is, a, who is a BBA and MBA. Go and interview one of our members of parliament who's the first Santhal girl to come into parliament. She's a physician, a doctor. The chief secretary, the key secretaries, 
okay, and the key ministers, they go and they camp in a district that becomes head office. Now, is that more important? No, no, that's commendable. And media, you're saying there's no second rung. No. We have different people doing different things. Yes, yes. And in this point, you're right. The party has one face. She is the one chief minister today. Give me one more chief minister who can call a meeting and 15 lakh, 1.5 million faithful will come to listen to her speech. Give me one. So when will this one chief minister going to give an exclusive interview to any of the channels? So mail the bhejo, kar dunga, try kar I've dunga. already done that. Achha. Okay, next time she's in Delhi. Four times. Next time she's in Delhi, I will certainly uh, make a good pitch for uh, Rajya Sabha TV and your USP will be uh, less noise, more talk. That's of course there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming on to Thank the point.